स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया we are going to talk today about method of characteristic so this method is one of the most important methods which you can learn and which actually gives you an solution of a pd i mean more or less it can be an explicit solution or an implicit solution but uh, um, um, a solution nonetheless so let's understand uh, the method with the help of a simple example and um, linear example actually and then we'll talk about uh, much difficult uh, you know um, harder problems to solve from there so first of all we'll assume uh, our, the problem in r2 right so we are going to start with a of xy ux plus b of xy ui equals to 0 so we look at this equation see this equation x and y will assume this thing to be from the whole of r2 i mean you can assume it from to be in some omega subset of r2 but i mean in that's okay for now we just want to understand what this particular expression means yeah so from the form of this equation you can see that it, this one so let's say this is one so one is a one is a first order order linear pd right that that much we already know that one is a first order linear uh, pd okay i want to find a solution of this equation yeah so whenever i say solution so this is very important see we want to talk about the solution of one equation one okay so first of all what does that mean so we have discussed it earlier whenever we say solution of one first order equation what we generally mean most of the time for this course at least what we mean is a function a function okay u okay so in c1 of r2 is said to be a solution of one if u satisfies one for all x y in r2 right so what we have is first of all you have to give the address of the function the address is c1 of r2 so if you remember c1 of r2 is the set of all set of all continuously differentiable functions okay on r2 right so uh, that is your c1 of r2 continuously differentiable functions on r2 and i have the solution as some function which satisfies this equation for all x y in r2 right now that's your solution now we want to understand what the expression one means right so and we want to do that geometrically so first of all we will look at the geometric interpretation geometric interpretation okay geometric interpretation okay what it means geometrically see whenever let's say uh, a solution exists so for initially we do not know if there is a solution or not okay and what it will look like for now just for the sake of understanding we will assume that a and b are continuous a and b are continuous in r2 okay so this we will assume and we also assume assume that there exists a solution okay see 
we do not know if that equation has a solution or not but initially what we are going to do is we are going to assume that a and b are continuous and there is a solution to this equation okay obviously uh, a priori i mean without doing anything we can obviously see that u equals to zero is always a solution of this equation right this is a homogeneous equation so u equals to zero are always solution okay so this is a small note before doing anything let's just look at this thing u the trivial solution is always a solution always a solution uh, solution of the homogeneous equation of the homogeneous equation right homogeneous equation one okay but i mean we are not interested but we will only be interested in non-trivial uh, solutions because you know uh, trivial solutions are not very important right so let's look at the geometric interpretation so we rewrite this equation huh? rewrite rewrite one as follows so i will write it like this a okay of x comma y b of x comma y and zero dot u x of x comma y u y of x comma y and minus one this is equals to zero okay okay so can I do that? Obviously, I can. You know, this is just a dot product for a fixed x, y. So you take any x, y in R2, and if I write it, I can obviously rewrite one like this because that will give me a of x, y, u, x plus b of x, y, u, y uh, equals to 0, right? Now, what is the significance of this? And uh, what makes it so, uh, I mean, special? See what happens is this. First of all, let us define some notations. Huh? Define s to be the graph of u okay now since u is c1 it is given we are assuming it is, there exists a solution huh? solution u let's say solution u huh? so uh, if there is a solution u the graph of u is smooth okay define s which is the graph term of an and since u is a solution is a solution s will be will be a regular surface right regular surface okay so what i mean by this is uh, i mean for every smooth surface not a regular surface so let's uh, put it like this it is a smooth surface smooth surface and what i mean by smooth surface by smooth surface, smooth surface means smooth surface. What does it mean? It means that uh, there exist tangent plane, okay, to S at every point. So every point admits a tangent uh, plane, right? So that's your smooth surface. Of course, whenever I'm saying smooth surface, I'm assuming so uh, that it is in R3. So I mean, of course, I mean, this is another small note. You guys already know this, but uh, let's just put it like this graph of U. So that is your S. This is defined like this, no? Uh, it is a set of all those X, Y, U of X, Y such that x y is in for now it is an r2 if you are uh, assuming or x y from omega then this is from in omega but now i am just assuming it is in r2 so it is in r2 so that's the graph of u of course this con is contained in r3 okay and this is a surface in r3 right so it will look something like this let's say that's your axis and uh, it will look something like this okay it will look something like this right so for any point x y so let's say this is your x is x y okay for any point x and y this point is called x y let's say so the graph of the point corresponding to the x y in the graph of s so this is your s huh? the surface s so this point will be 
x comma y comma u of x comma y right so that's your graph of u now this is a regular curve so at every point you have a tangent vector right so uh, tangent plane will say this point has a tangent plane okay and you also have a normal to that plane right so uh, normal at the point x y that will be given by u of x x comma y u of y x comma y and minus 1 right that's your normal at that point at this point there is a tangent plane and the normal will be given by ux at the point x y u y at the point x y and minus 1 this we already know from uh, basic calculus courses right okay now once we have this normal see what it means is uh, let's look at this equation see one can be written like this no and any point at any point on the surface s if this is the normal it means that a b c dot this vector the normal vector is zero it means a b c a b and zero this vector yeah this always lies on the tangent plane right so this implies let's say that is your 2 so from 2 we have we have a b 0 lies on the tangent plane okay of s at x y right at that point at that point x y there is a tangent sorry x y sorry this is x y u of x y okay so at the point x y u of x y there is a tangent plane and uh, it means that a b 0 this vector this lies on the tangent plane because the dot product of this vector with that normal okay is 0 right so we have this idea that uh, for in and this holds for any point x y x y is an arbitrary point in r2 right this holds for any point in x y right so since a p and 0 lies on the tangent plane of s at the point x and y u of x y hence what we can do is we can use this information to actually find what a c c s is the graph of u right and u is the unknown so if we can somehow you know get to know what s is we can extract what u is from there right now uh, we need to construct so construction construction of s right that's our goal now how to construct s now you see let's say that is the surface yeah this is the surface which we need to construct this is your s now this point is your point x y u of x y okay now let's say this is any curve on the surface s okay which passes through this point so this is x y u of x y okay and u of x y you can understand that's the z coordinate right yes u of x y is a z coordinate so let's say this is c of s some curve let so let c of s which is given by x of s y of s z by s be a parameterized curve parameterized curve yeah, on the surface on the surface s right so c of s is a parameterized curve on the surface s and obviously it passes through and passes through through the point x y u of x y clear yeah? so essentially what i am trying to do is this first of all i want to construct the surface s right and for that first we start with finding a curve c of s parameterized curve parameterized with the help of s okay so s you can assume um, this is small assumption s in in some interval i 
right now we want to find what c of s is right now we know something about c of s and that is this see c of s lies on the surface s s is a smooth surface so c of s i can talk about the tangent vector um, tangent to this curve right so tangent to c of s so that is given by c prime of s is given by x prime of s y prime of s and z prime of s right c of s uh, c prime of s which is given by t prime of s y prime of s and z prime of s this is a tangent at this point no so this is a tangent vector at this point okay at this point and this tangent vector should lie on the tangent plane correct so this tangent vector should lie on the tangent plane so the tangent plane at this point let's say this is your tangent plane at that point so this vector should lie c prime s should lie on the tangent plane okay of s at the point x y u of x y right this should lie now you see the choice of c of s right the choice of the curve is on us i mean we can choose whatever curve we want huh? as long as the curve lies on the surface right lies on the surface see we want our curve and we know that there is a vector which vector this vector a b0 that lies on the tangent plane to s right this vector lies on the tangent plane so we'll assume that our curve so we are basically looking for a curve parameterized curve c of s which looks like this such that the c prime of s should look like this okay this vector so this vector also lies in the tangent plane and this is another vector which we have constructed x prime y prime z prime which lies also on the tangent plane yeah we want this curve c of s to be such that x prime s equals to a of xs ys y prime s equals to b of xs ys and z prime s is in this case zero okay we want this thing to happen okay so should lie on this thing and such that okay so please understand here it's not that any curve will do this thing we want a curve we want a parameterized curve which lies on s such that at any point on this x y u of x y at that point these three equation holds okay see a b zero lies on the tangent plane and this thing the, this curve is on our hands we want the tangent vector to this point at that point to um, represent this particular vector right so this we get three such equations see these equations are called so let's say this is your uh, q okay now q has a very special name so q so the equation q huh? this is a system of equation three equations q is a system of equation okay system of ODEs as you can see it is ODEs yes system of ODEs and are called the characteristic equation characteristic equation okay of the pd1 clear so given the pd1 the the system of od is q which looks like this x prime s is a y prime s is b and z prime s is zero in our case okay that is called the characteristic equation of course if you just uh, I mean you can change 0 to c of x y so basically if you have an inhomogeneous equation then you can just uh, take that c here it's not a problem but anyways let's just do it this way okay now if we have something like this c this is a system of ODs right and we know that if a and b are given to be continuous there is a solution to this equation right so you know, by Picard's theorem by Picard's theorem 
So this is the theorem on OD, the existence theorem, the Cars theorem. We have the existence of a solution. Okay. Now this solution can be a local solution. Okay. We do not know if it is a global or not, but we know that there is a local solution at the point, uh, whatever point we are looking at that point x y u of x y around that point. This is a local solution. Okay. So let's say the solution which we get, uh, it will be x s y s z s, right? So you solve this equation and you get x s y s z s. This is the solution you get, okay? So this lies on s, right? And this uh, this actually is the curve c of s, right? So c of s, this c of s is called the existence of solution this, uh, which is given by this, okay, right? Now. This curve C of S is called the characteristic curve or the integral curve for the PD1. Okay. So C of S. So C of S is called the integral curve to the PD1. Right. Now take the union of all such curves okay once you do that then that should give you your required surface and that surface will be called the integral surface okay so uh, union of uh, so take the union of all such curves uh, which should give s okay s is the graph of u and we call s as the integral surface i mean this is not a very standard practice to call it but we will just call it a integral surface uh, to the pd one okay but c of s is always called an integral curve so essentially what is happening is a curve on the surface x that is always called we solve this particular equations is called the integral curve these particular in three equations are called integral equation uh, sorry characteristic equations and uh, the surface which you get by taking the union of all such curves is called a integral uh, surface okay now let us take up an example and see how all of this works so example let's say you have this equation ux plus ui ux plus uh, right uh, let's say this is a ux plus ui equals to 0 let us take this uh, see a i am starting out with a constant here so a is a real constant and xy is in r2 for now let's just take that we want to solve this equation of course u equals to 0 is the solution of this equation i mean you don't need to do anything to understand that right but we want to find non trivial solutions okay so what uh, you need to do is first of all write down the characteristic equation so let's say c of s is x of s y of s and z of s b a curve so i want this to be an integral curve okay be a curve on s which is the graph of u see this is assuming that u is a uh, solution which is we already know okay see u is unknown we are assuming that there is a solution i don't know what the explicit solution is that is what we need to find i am assuming there is a solution not an explicit solution i know there is a solution and i want to find the explicit solution that is why we are doing all of this okay so let's say c of s is x of s y of s z of s be a curve on s uh, for s in i okay so and write on the characteristic equation so the characteristic equations are given by this characteristic 
equations will be given by this x prime of s this is the thing which should be corresponding to ux right this is given by a and y prime of s should be something which is corresponding to ui which is given by 1 here and z prime of s is here whatever is on the this hand this is 0 so this is 0 right now let's solve this thing what does this gives this gives x of s to be a s plus some constant let's say c1 the second equation gives you y of s is s plus c2 and the third equation gives you z of s is c3 so essentially what this means is uh, we are um, z is always a constant and we are looking uh, for an equation such that x and y will look like this c1 c2 c3 are arbitrary constants okay uh, so here these are the integral curves okay uh, these are the integral curves for c1 c2 c3 in r okay arbitrary c1 c2 c3 okay now uh, you see what happens now is if we somehow eliminate s from here yeah we'll get some relation so let's do that and see what we get from here once you eliminate so eliminating s eliminating s we have we have x of s equals to a times so s i eliminated so x is a obviously x depends on s for now we are not going to write uh, this to be depending on x so we we'll just write x equals to a times o s right and s c uh, let's write it it is a s plus c1 y is s plus c2 and z is some constant c3 right so what is x x is y minus c2 y minus c2 plus c1 right now if you write it properly it gives you x minus a y equals to some constant let's say c4 right uh, c4 is a constant which obviously depends on a but uh, i mean a is also a constant so it does not really matter okay so what we are getting from here eliminating s is x minus a y equals to c4 now what does this three equation says so it says that uh, so what does this mean you see from these two equation we eliminated s and we got this relation so whenever we are saying there is a characteristic curve what is the characteristic curve doing the characteristic curve solves this equation these are lines right it it solves this equation it satisfies this relation along with this relation so essentially what it is saying is z is constant along these lines right these lines x minus a y equals to c4 these lines is in x y plane right and z will be constant along this line so what are the characteristic curves what are the characteristic curves what are the integral curves integral curves so integral curves are also called characteristic curves sometimes but what are the integral curves it says that you see the integral curves okay integral curves are given by x minus a y equals to c4 and z equals to c3 okay it means that that is z what is z z is u of x y no z is the height z is the height which is u of x y so it says that u of x y is constant along the line x minus a y 
equals to c4 right that's what it is saying see y z is con uh, u of x y just think about the graph of the function let's say that is our graph of the function right at any point x y here let's say x y is any point here what is u of x y that's your z right that's your z coordinate so z is u of x y you know okay u of x y so uh, that is why i am writing it like this so z equals to u of x y is constant z is constant along these lines yeah so you see let's say x minus a y equals to c4 so those are lines which looks like this on the so x y plane let's let's just draw the domain here huh? x y plane x and y yeah i don't know what a and all of this is so let's just uh, say that these are x minus a y lines huh? x minus a y equals to constants so these are x minus a y equals to constants equals to constant these are the lines so what are the integral curves the integral curves are such curves which are constants such that u is constant along these lines yeah so if you look at the curve the graph of the function along these lines okay the graph is constant along this line huh? And once we get this, we can actually construct a surface out of it. How do we construct a surface? So construction, constructing an integral surface. Integral surface. Let's see how we can construct an integral surface from here. Okay. See. We will define u of x, y now. This is a constant, right? So, and uh, x minus a, y is c4. We said that u of x, y is constant along the line this. So, if you write it like this, let's say this is some function of x minus a, y. Yes, if you can write u like this. So, you see where x minus a, y is are constant, u is constant along those lines, right? This is what it is saying. So this particular, these two expression can be written down like this. And this f, f is in c1 of r. This is very important, huh? not not to c1 of r. x is in r, y is in r, a is in r, x minus a, y is in r. So this is in c1 of r. Why we need c1, we'll explain later. But uh, I mean, these two expressions can be combined together to form this thing. and this is the solution this is what we claim okay why this is the solution first of all uh, f is c1 if f is c1 u is c1 okay so uh, for a solution u has to be c1 so that implies therefore u is in c1 right of r2 and let's say what is u of x let's see what is u of x if you write it like this u of x is f prime yeah and u of y what is u of y u of y is minus a f prime f prime y because f is just a real value function okay now if that is the case therefore let's say what is u of x plus a u of x plus u of y what happens to this thing it is a f prime minus a f prime which is zero so this holds for all x y in r2 right so this is zero for all x y in r2 and hence what we can say is u which is given by this is a solution so clearly clearly f is an arbitrary uh, function right function and and hence one admits infinitely many solutions right so and that is uh, i mean expected right so uh, what we did is uh, how did we find the surface we have looked at the surface like this that the, the surface s which we are looking for should look like a constant along these lines yeah along x minus a y lines along these lines if you look at the graph of the function that should be constant and with the help of that we have constructed u like this f of uh, some function of x minus a y okay so when x minus a y is some constant it is f of some constant which is again some another constant and u is that constant right okay so and uh, f is obviously c1 
which actually gives us our solution. So this is how we, uh, you know, interpret a linear first order equation. A few remarks here. Remarks. So what we have seen is this. See, a u x plus c y equals to zero. So this is a first order linear equation, right? And what we have seen is any solution u of x y will look like a function of x minus a y, right? X minus a y. That is what we have seen. Now what it says is it says so number one it says that uh, the solutions are constants along the line x minus a y equals to c. So along these lines the solution is constant that we have already discussed. Number two, this is very important, okay? And this is where the equation gets its name. So this equation, yes, is called a transport equation because it transports information, okay? How? We'll, we are going to see now. See what is happening here is this. As I have explained, you have, let's say, let us look at the characteristic uh, lines, okay? So in R2, so this is your x-axis, this is your y-axis. And let's say that those are the characteristic lines here. Yeah? Let's just draw some characteristic lines. Let us the, um, draw these characteristic lines here. Yeah? Now, why they are called transport equations? See, let's say this is the equation given. So what is the equation? A u x, uh, the equation is A u x plus u y equals to zero. And let us assume that the initial condition, so the data is given on the x axis here. Yeah? So let's say um, the data is given on the x-axis and it is given by uh, u of u of uh, let's say x zero, yeah. So the data is given along. See the function is defined on a whole of x y, right? And the data, let's say this is given only on um, the x-axis. So u at the point x zero is let's say I don't know maybe g of x. Uh, for now, let's just define g of x to be sin x, right? Now, if that is given to you, what can we say? We can actually uh, say that u of x and y, if you if you put it here, that will give you u of x0 is, therefore, u of x0 is f of x, right? f of x, which is given by sin x. That's the initial condition given to us. So that will imply f should be sine, right? f is the sine function, fx is sine x. That's what it is giving. Yeah. So what is happening here is this. See, let's say you are given information u of x0 equals to sine x. Let's say at that this point is x0, 0. Okay. And you know what the value of u is at this point. Yeah. Now, if you go to this point, let's say any point on the line, on this line, let's say this is this point is some other point uh, x1, y1, yeah, x1, y1, but it lies on this line. What is happening here is this. We know that the solution is constant along these lines, right? So what is happening is if you know the value of the function at this point, you also know the value of the function at this point because those are going to be same because they are constants, yes? And that is why the information which you put on the initial line, so the initial data which you have, that data is getting carried forward using on along these lines, right? So this is why the, that is why I am saying this is where the name comes. So the transport equation, the data, the data is transported, right? transported transported along the along the characteristic lines characteristic lines right along the characteristic lines so uh, let me explain again what i mean by this is if you give a data on here that data data gets propagated along the line right 
so at any point on the line u is constant and that is why that get data get propagated along the line and that remains the same so that is why it's called a transport equation transport data transport data along the line okay so that is why it's called a transport equation now uh, let us look at it a little more uh, with some initial condition so let's look at this equation so the equation uh, let's say the transport equation huh? transport equation a u x plus u y equals to uh, let's say 0 and u at the point x 0 is um, something eh? let's say g of x yeah i'm not putting here i put it g of x to be sign it let's uh, assume that g of x is s now we have you know you can do the exact same thing and you can say that u of x y should look like g of x minus a y right g of x minus a y right so is a solution not a solution uh, these are solutions so basically i should write u of x y equals to the r solutions uh, so it's a general solution you can say it's a general solution it's a general solution solution of uh, two. Hmm? 2 okay but for now what i'm going to do is this now i'm not going to assume uh, that I mean of, of course uh, you can solve this thing and you can get uh, the solution to be f of x minus a y and then you put the initial condition and you get that f to be g and you just replace it you get the solution but for now I am not going to assume this thing yeah we are going to do something else and this is please keep this in mind because this is what we are going to use so the uh, the general method huh? general method of finding characteristics okay okay so um, let's look at this equation a of x y u x plus b of x y u y equals to c of x y okay and uh, i mean you, you want i can uh, let's, let's just assume as it to be a semi-linear equation huh? c of x y u does not matter so let's just assume this thing and let's assume that the initial condition is given on this thing x 0 is g of x okay so i am starting out with the semi-linear equation which looks like this a of x y u x plus b of x y u y plus c of x y u c a b c these are all are continuous functions huh? this is what i am assuming these are all continuous functions and here uh, g is um, continuously differentiable the differentiable okay now i want to solve this equation so let's say let's write it as p yeah i will use the same sort of idea the geometric idea behind it but in a little different way see now uh, what we have is this we have a uh, this equation this is our familiar kind of equation right with some uh, i mean we, the initial problem was a uh, homogeneous equation this is the inhomogeneous equation that's not a problem uh, okay but uh, i mean i we know how to handle this thing right yeah using the characteristic equations now we are given a additional information that we want our u to uh, do this that at the point x0 it should look like g of x right okay so uh, let's write the characteristic equation and see see first of all uh, i want to do this thing that we want to find a surface right we want to so we should look we should look for a surface s right which is the graph of u which is the graph of u yeah and 
S should contain should contain the curve R zero G of R. Okay, this is R is some interval. So what I meant by this is C. Uh, basically solving this the first equation means that you are basically looking for a graph of u right uh, i mean the, you are looking for surfaces which is a graph of u a regular uh, sorry smooth surfaces and uh, solve i mean if you solve this if, uh, you satisfy this uh, data u of u at the point x0 is g of x what it means is the surface must contain and this curve right uh, so let's say I am character, I am parameterizing the x axis with R zero. So R zero and U at the point R zero should be G of R, right? So essentially, what I may mean by this is something like this. See, let's say that is the x y axis and let us assume that uh, the curve this is our surface s this is our s which is graph of u okay now uh, let's say x0 so any point x0 here let's say this is x0 0 the surface which you are looking for that should satisfy u of x0 equals to g of x right so uh, I mean, if you look at the corresponding point on the surface, it is x naught 0 and u of x naught 0 is g of x naught 0, right? g of x naught. So, any surface, any surface which satisfies these two conditions has to uh, pass through this point x naught 0, g of x naught, okay? And this holds for any point in x. Uh, axis right so uh, I mean uh, this should contain a curve which is parameterized by r not 0 g of r right so this is our new information so now let's write down the characteristic equation so let let so for a fixed s fix r greater than 0 yeah this r is varying on the x axis huh? so let c of r is be the characteristic stick okay curve characteristic curve okay and how should it look like we will write it like this it is x of r s y of r s and z of r s okay yeah so see for a fixed r so let's say this this is a fixed r zero x x not 0 so r is x not here x not 0 this is the fixed point x r 0 so x not 0 g of x not yeah this is for r equals to x not see we now we want our characteristic equation not just any arbitrary characteristic equation we want our characteristic equation to start from here yeah and after that it should move uh, i mean it, it should start from here and then move outwards on the surface right so c of s lies on the surface on the surface on s such that this point x prime of r s okay this should be a of x r s y of r s y prime of r s is b of x r s y of r s and z prime of r s should be c of x r s y of r s okay so what i mean by this what is the prime here see here x lies x varies between r and s right it is a two variable function so what does this prime is i have fixed r so this is a fixed r r equals to x naught and i'm looking at a curve which emanates from here it starts from here and goes along on its path which lies on s right in such a way that x prime is equals to a y prime equals to b z prime equals to c see we are doing exactly the same thing but here just the additional assumption that we are assuming that the curve starts from 
this line is it clear it is uh, not the line it starts on the curve so it starts from the curve and then moves outward okay as as s increases so r is parameterizing the data curve okay so this is the data curve okay so we will write see gamma of r so this is the data curve okay data curve and that is parameterized by parameterized by parameterized by r okay this is gamma of r this is gamma of r and c of r is now you fix the r so let's say here r is x naught fix the r on the curve this is the gamma of r okay this is gamma of r this curve you fix r and then you look at the curve c of s this is c of r is for this fix r equals to x naught so this is x naught r s huh? okay x naught s we are looking for this such that this derivative is with respect to s okay right now this is not the end we have more information here so what is x at the point r zero what do you think it happened c at the point x not zero so r zero is this so r zero r is at this point zero is s equals to zero right so when the curve starts from this point so at that point what is the first uh, component here x not so x not is r so essentially this is r right what is the first component of this uh, data curve r so at the point r0 s equals to 0 when you are starting at s equals to 0 the first mm, data is r right the component y at the point r0 what it should be it should be 0 no okay it is 0 and z at the point r0 what it should be see z at the point r0 z at the point x0 0 is g of x0 so it is g of r okay so s equals to 0 it starts from here s equals to 0 that is why we are taking the initial value r0 g of r here so these three equations so you are given an equation with the initial data these three equations are called characteristic equations corresponding to the problem p uh, and once you solve it you get the integral so you see now is there a solution for this thing what is it this is an ode right it's a system of ode so let me put it this way let's let's say this is your q right this is your new q so uh, q is a system of of ode right initial value initial value problem is initial values are given and hence picard's uniqueness theorem you can use picard's uniqueness theorem gives an unique solution unique solution x of r is y of r s and z of r s in a neighborhood of r 0 right so in a neighborhood of this r not 0 you get a unique solution okay you get a unique solution so that solution let's say x of r s y of r s z of r s this is the curve c of r s let's say huh? this is the integral curve this is the integral curve okay and simultaneously the union of those c of s that will give you your capital s okay that's the surface so s is in some some interval let's say g okay so once you do that that is giving you the integral surface this is integral surface okay so the we are doing the exact same thing but with the initial data here so once this is clear let's look at an example and clarify what i meant by all of this example 
u t plus a u x equals to let's say um, 0 okay and u at the point x 0 is let us just make it a little difficult here uh, let's say this is u okay uh, this is u and let's say u at the point x0 is uh, let us say it is sine of x now how does this look see if you want to say, write the characteristic equations characteristic equations equations Okay, so once you, when you need to solve this equation, you have to write that C of R S is a characteristic equation uh, where R is parameterized by, the, I mean, R is parameterized in the data curve. Okay, so what is the data curve here? First of all, let's see. The data curve is given by R 0 sin of R. That's the data curve. Okay, data curve. And C of R S is the characteristic curve. Okay. So we are writing the characteristic equation it is given by x prize r s this is corresponding to x this is a right and t prime r s this is corresponding to u t which is 1 and z prime r s is corresponding to this thing whatever is in the right hand side here it is u so this is u is z right u is z because u is the height so z is represents the height so this is z okay what are the initial conditions given to us so x at the point r0 this is given to be r y at the point r0 is given to be 0 and z at the point r0 is given to be sine of r right so this is what is there now once you solve it let's solve this is let's say 1 2 3 so solving 1 solving 1 x of r s is a s plus phi 1 of r right and when you put the initial condition and x of r 0 is r that implies x of r s is a s plus r right so similarly, similarly, T of R S should be, sorry, this this should be T. Okay, I made a small mistake here. This should be T. So T of R S, T is constant. T is one uh, along S. Okay, so T of R S is S plus phi one of R. And uh, when you put this initial condition, it will only give you S. So T of R S is S. Okay. And Z prime of R S is Z. So if you solve this thing, so similarly T of and if you solve this thing, what should you get? So mm, let's just solve this thing. It is log Z equals to, it is log of mod Z is equals to S plus phi 2 of r right now let's put log of uh, sine of r z at the point r0 okay uh, so at the point r0 is so log of z r is here log of z r is uh, r0 is sine of so log of sine r uh, so this gives you log of mod z equals to s plus log of mod sign up okay right now you can just uh, solve uh, i mean you can write it properly and that will give you mod z yeah uh, equals to e power s sign r okay so um, once you put it uh, together what we are going to get is something like this so hence hence from 1 and 2 see x is a s plus r and t is s so x equals to a t plus r right this is what i am getting from these two and z is this so and uh, now define define 
u of x y to be your z which is given by uh, e power s sine of r right so this is e power s e power t e power t sine of r is x minus a t so that's your solution so u of a right this should be t I keep on writing y it should be t so u of x t z power t sine of okay now let us see that if we this thing is a solution or not so this is what we got this is our uh, this should be our solution yeah so uh, verify verify e, ut is uh, e power t sine of x minus a t okay uh, minus a e power t cosine x minus a t this is what we are getting and u x equals to e power t uh, cosine x minus a t this is what we are getting right so uh, what is our equation the, our equation is u t plus a u x yeah so if you multiply this with a and add it up so u t plus a u x this should give you e to the power t sine of x minus a t okay and which is your u right so ut plus a u x equals to u you see this is the equation huh? so this is the uh, solution so this is our required solution required solution of course this is c1 there is no need to uh, verify this thing it's the exponential function that's a sine function that's a c1 function so u of x t this is the required solution so with this we are going to end uh, this lecture